Creating a More Inclusive Curriculum and Equity and Diversity Project, Kristen Samet. The Briarcliff Manor School District is located in northern Westchester, New York. We are home to the Bears for our athletic program, and our school motto is Every Child, Every Day. We are a small, inclusive district with three school buildings, Todd Elementary School serving grades K to 5, our middle school building serving grades 6 to 8, and our high school, Briarcliff High School, serving grades 9 to 12. We are an affluent community with a median household income at around $200,000. We are a high achieving school district. Our students do particularly well on the Regents and AP exams. Therefore, what is the problem? In the spring, students expressed the need for more inclusivity at Briarcliff High School after the death of George Floyd and subsequent protests in the spring. They noted that conversations, literature, and other content almost never reflected a diverse point of view. Due to the fact that our district is about 69% white, most of our students would identify as being of Caucasian descent. Therefore, our other population of students, the ones who were particularly, but not only, outspoken about the events in the spring, included former graduates and current high school students. They presented their concerns at a board meeting earlier in 2020. Most of the curriculum tended to present a white point of view. Therefore, if we are going to be true to our motto of every student every day, then we need to have a curriculum that is more reflective of our student population as a whole, not just the predominant population. What is the pro why is the problem of practice important to solve? Well, not only should our school motto be reflected in our curriculum, but if this problem is not solved, students will continue to feel underrepresented and not reflected in the curriculum. And as such, they will not have the opportunity to read a variety of texts from multiple perspectives or diverse authors before they graduate from Briarcliff. This would affect all of our students. So would learning history from a single story instead of learning history as a layered and ongoing story. If the humanities in particular, even though diversity and equity can be addressed in all contents, do not changed to reflect more worldview, our students will be ill-prepared to enter a multicultural world after graduation. If you look at the quote on the left, stories matter, many stories matter, stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. Ngozi's quote is so important because of the emphasis on many stories matter. We can't present our students with a single worldview and call it a worldview. It is not. Even if one particular group is cast in a negative light in one version of a story, it doesn't mean that that story isn't layered as well. Therefore, exposing students to more of a variety, giving them a chance to really understand a time period or a group of people, will better prepare them not only to be more multicultural, but critical thinkers as well. How can we begin to address this problem of practice and what steps can we take to prepare teachers to have these conversations and present this kind of curriculum to our students? If we offer teachers the opportunity to evaluate the curriculum through the lens of equity and diversity and representation of all students within the curriculum, and we give teachers the time to develop new units, then they will see how underrepresented students of color are in literature and content across the grade levels. They will be more apt to add titles and replace outdated ones in their syllabus to reflect more diverse thinking across the contents, and they will continue to develop these units for future instruction. Therefore, what do teachers need in order to accomplish these goals? So for our first goal of giving student teachers the opportunity to evaluate the curriculum, they can participate in our implicit bias training where they'll be able to synthesize what they've learned and determine how the current curriculum is addressing multiple perspectives, if and when it is, and how it can be done more. We also should continue to gather feedback from teachers and debrief about these trainings so that teachers can be part 
of the voices about the work that needs to be done and what they need to accomplish this work. Since this kind of training and this kind of implicit bias work is personal to each participant in the training. This should be taking place this spring. As a short-term goal, we need feedback from teachers and we need them to begin thinking about what to do next, but as a long-term goal, hopefully we'll be able to organize a broader curriculum task force in each building to continue this work each year. The second goal is we need to give teachers time to develop new units. So therefore, we need to have a task force to begin this work, teachers who are eager to begin this work, and possibly provide them with summer hours and pay to begin developing and revising units that will reflect the district's equity and diversity work, and then share that work with their peers. This work should begin in the summer of 2021. Teachers will begin this work over the summer, but as a long-term goal, they will help their colleagues, not only by sharing the work that they do, but helping their colleagues revise their units and implement more equity and diversity practices into their contents as well. So what's next overall? We need to develop a budget to accomplish this work. Funds are needed for professional development for teachers. Summer money is also necessary to provide teachers with work to create and revise units to reflect multiple perspectives. This kind of work takes time, energy, and effort and cannot be rushed. Therefore, teachers need to be given the necessary time to accomplish this work. We also need to empower our students' voices through clubs and committee crossover. The Student Experience Subcommittee of our Equity and Diversity Committee is working closely with many student organizations to amplify student voices as well. They began by telling us what their need was, and we should continue to empower their voices throughout this work. How can our, com How can our community stakeholders help us with this work? Well, you can be involved. Help volunteer and provide feedback to the district during this process. Talk to your children to ensure their voices are also represented in this work. Not every student is outgoing for him or herself, and your voice can be part of your family's message about this work. Speak with other parents to gain more perspectives to share. Team up with other community members to amplify positive messages messages. We need people who support us to make that vocal within our communities as well. We need your help. Also, reach out to your building leaders to become more involved in this work. How can we eventually go beyond curriculum and begin to shift the culture in our schools? We really need to depend on our community and our parents to help us to do this. It takes a village to make a change. Overall, there is still much work to be done. The steps outlined in this paper are just the beginning of a much longer process over the course of several years. However, this is also not the type of work that has a definitive endpoint. This culturally responsive work should be ongoing and continue to develop with the rest of the pedagogical work that happens within a district. Inclusivity and incorporating multiple perspectives should be at the forefront of the curriculum teachers create, much like the standards. These two concepts should be merged, where eventually teachers are creating lesson plans and units in this mindset with confidence and expertise. Equality and equity for our students, there is no greater important thing. Students feeling safe and represented in their classrooms is so important and we need to look at it not only as a pedagogical outlook but as a developing our students' character as well. These are our children and we have to support them. Thank you for your attention to this important matter. Thank you. I'm Kristen Zamet.